I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Nicaragua. Thank you to all the new people. We have so many new people on the channel this week. It is absolutely phenomenal. And I know a lot of you are here because you're interested in topics around relocation. And so we're gonna do a little bit of relocation skills today. If you're new to a new country, you're fresh off the boat, you're bright-eyed, you're bushy-tailed, you're excited, and you are a really good target for a lot of people. And it doesn't matter where you're moving, anywhere in the world, a new immigrant. And yes, we're gonna call you an expat when you're first going to look and we're like, oh, come, come live the expat life. But the reality is, is when you hit the ground, you're a new immigrant to that country and you are unaware of a lot of things you need to know, but you're also ready to start living your life. And that makes you an absolute prime target for so many people. We wanna, we wanna give you some travel skills and some relocation skills to make moving to your new country safer and more productive. We're gonna get to that right after the bump. I have the benefit of having relocated to many countries over the years and having gone through the experience of being a newbie in a new country many times. And there are some similarities that you're gonna hit on a regular basis. And some of these are also true just when you're traveling, not only when you are relocating and actually becoming an expat. In some cases, it's simply you're, you're just arriving and, and you don't know everything you need to know. There's a famous country in northwestern Africa that had a lot of tourists and because the country was relatively low income and a lot of tourists with a lot more average income than the local population would arrive by boat typically, uh, you would be swarmed right as you got off the boat. There'd be a million people offering you taxi rides and tours and, and special visas and all kinds of things that didn't really exist or were overpriced or whatever. It was such an unbelievable scam. Eventually the government had to step in and ban all of that stuff and actually make really heavy penalties. But it became a really big thing because the economy of going after people who've just stepped off a boat, they're confused, they're excited, especially if you're a traveler, chances are you have a lot of money in your pocket, whether literally cash or figuratively credit cards, but you're ready to spend money. You're ready to go out and do things because you're on vacation. Imagine someone arriving in Cancun or Disney World. You get off the plane and if someone's like, look, it's $10 to give you a visa, you can't get into you know, Disney World without it, you can't get into, but you're like, what, whatever, $10, I just wanna enjoy my vacation. And person after person starts coming up with fake things or offering you a taxi ride Oh, I'm the only taxi in town. I talked to the others, they're busy. Or, you know, famously Cancun is just one scam after another and organized crime all waiting right at the airport to get you. So you, this is an obvious economic situation that, that governments need to step in and protect against because it is so difficult for someone first arriving at an airport, at a, at a, uh, a shipping port or whatever, you step off and that moment you're, you're like trying to deal with your luggage and you're trying to like acclimate to the new place. The weather's hitting you, the time zone's hitting you, the, the physical location, maybe a new language. There's so many barriers to getting into that new country in those first few minutes. Of course, savvy travelers are ready. They know people are going to be approaching them. They're used to seeing a new place, but most people aren't experienced savvy, savvy travelers. That is by far a tiny group of people people. And even those can be intimidated or overwhelmed by the situation or simply find it not worth the effort to try to get out of. So when you're traveling, that's very much the case. But a lot of people don't realize that when you relocate, that is also the case. The same effect is going to happen, but it's slightly different. It isn't people coming and offering to carry your bags for you or people offering you a taxi ride somewhere, at least not normally. It's going to be a little bit more insidious. And I want to talk about this because so many people are looking at becoming expats. So many people are looking at emigrating, and I know a lot of Canadians just joined the channel, but we, we traditionally have loads of Americans, a lot of Europeans, a lot of Australians, a few New Zealanders. Like We have people from all over the world that are looking at options for relocation, often from the global north to the global south. And here in the global south, you know, it's a, it's a phenomenal opportunity, and we're generally very, very welcoming to all these people coming. But it's really easy to get sucked into a lot of bad situations that is just universal. I wanna give you some tools on what to look for and how to respond and how to act to protect yourselves to make your experience of relocation wherever it is, you're gonna be moving to much more productive and a lot more safe and give you the opportunity for a, a positive relocation experience. In my experience, there are three kinds of 
scams or cons that are generally run against people who are newly moving to a new country. Now, in some cases, you're going to have a number of cons if you're a traveler and you're in a country and you're, you're just in a tourist mode. And there's a lot of people that are going to try to take advantage of you by convincing you that it is something that you want to do to move to that country. So there is a transitional scam kind of category that does exist. But that's not really what we're talking about. What we're really more concerned about is when you've made the decision that you're going to relocate to a country. And I'll use Nicaragua in some examples because I live here and it is not different than other countries. Every country is like this. And a lot of these are especially acute if you're moving from a wealthy area to a lower cost of income area where there's a lot of opportunity for uh, your income, your available spending power to be a major economic factor. If you're moving from a very uh, low income country to a very expensive country, these opportunities are much less. There's very little money to be made on immigrants. But when you're coming from uh, the other direction, the amount of money that can be made on immigrants is often confusing to the new immigrants coming into that country. Yes, they may be aware that they have more buying power than the average local, but the degree to which that may impact an economy and the way that that economy is likely to behave often isn't something that they've thought about. And so it can be very important to internalize that if you're bringing, uh, say, say, a spending power of uh, half a million dollars Canadian, and you're coming into a place where that represents uh, many, many, many people's annual salaries or, or potentially lifetime salaries, and you're, you're in a position where you're easily thinking, maybe I want to spend that on a house, I want to spend it on a business investment. Well, of course, People are looking at if they could get one person to buy a house, one person to invest in a business, they could be looking at a windfall uh, of, of potentially a lifetime of earnings or completely revitalize their village, not just their house. And so the, the uh, drive, the encouragement to go out and try to find ways to get money from immigrants that are coming in, expats that are arriving is huge. And so when you first get off that boat, you're in this euphoric moment oh, I'm in a new country. Now, some people are very with a lot of trepidation and that's fine. Obviously that's true. And some people are just super excited and a lot of people are some blend. And both of those things make you very vulnerable when you're cautious and you're, you're very trepidatious. You have a tendency to look for people who you feel you can trust. And so there's a lot of people who are looking to, to gain your confidence and then lead you maybe not into a full out scam, but easily into spending uh, far more than you should in a place that it doesn't make sense for you. They have something to sell you, they're gonna guide you to that. And everybody has access to something to sell you. In a market where uh, the amount of income that you potentially have is so high, there's always someone willing to give a significant kickback to someone who's able to drive that business to them. The, the income levels are just so impacted by this that it's hard to imagine anyone saying no. So the three categories of really common scams that I witness on a regular basis. One is real estate. This is the most obvious, but also probably the easiest to get you tricked into, which is amazing because real estate represents under normal circumstances such an enormous part of our in lifetime investments, right? Of all the things that you do in your life, Choosing what homes to buy is right up there with what university you go to, who you marry, those kinds of decisions in your life. So this is not something to take lightly. Obviously, it's lighter than those, but it's in that general category. The, buying a house is a life-changing event in, in basically all cases. So you want to be really cautious when you're looking at buying a house or when someone's trying to sell you a house or even just land to build on. That's obviously less of a risk, but absolutely a risk as well. But when you first arrive in a new country, one thing that you know for sure is you are not in a position to be buying a house. That should be, just goes without saying. Yet there's an emotional drive. You're moving to a new country. You feel that you are in flux. You feel that there is uncertainty. You're in a new place. There's a lot of like, oh, I'm not connected to this place. I don't know this place. I don't have connections. It's just a lot of things. That emotional feeling drives you to want to put down roots and find a way to stabilize. And one of the most dangerous things is to have that turn into a desire to own property at the time that you're moving. Owning property is a great thing. Owning a house is a great thing. Those are not negatives. I in no way want to make this sound like I'm saying you shouldn't own houses. What I'm saying is that at the moment that you're fresh off the boat, you're just arrived in a new place, there could not be a worse time in your life to even talk to someone about buying a house because you are in an emotional state 
or you are super vulnerable to being convinced that you want to invest heavily because that feels like it's a stabilizing force in your life at a moment when you are otherwise very much in motion. And it feels like if you put down those roots, that will give you connections. The process will give you friends. You will become a part of a community. And all those things have some, some connection to truth, but they are not what you're imagining. And it is a super dangerous thing to do for so many reasons. Even if the person who was trying to help you was in earnest, being honest and just, oh, I want to help you find a house because you're a nice person. And I think you'd be cool in my neighborhood. That's okay. Unlikely because you just got here, but it's plausible. But that person is not looking out for your interest. They may not be thinking of your interest. They may have no idea because they don't know you, you're new, whatever. And they think that, well, my neighborhood's nice and you're nice and this will go together well. But they are not evaluating your life in the way that someone who is trying to help you make good life decisions would do. A good life decision would be stepping back and saying, do I know enough? to know that I want to put down roots and buy a house here. When you're just moving to a new country, you are making a huge commitment, but there's no reason to make it that much more of a commitment. If you're moving to Nicaragua, for example, it is super easy right now to just hop on a plane, come down to Nicaragua and sample the country. You don't have to do anything dramatic. You don't have to do anything that stops you from just getting on a plane and flying back home. There's conveniences to bringing lots of things with you, but you don't have to do that. You can come down with just some luggage and live out of that, buy anything you need locally, rent a place, even rent short-term places so they're furnished or whatever, and, and you don't have to make a major commitment to anything. And that doesn't mean you're not coming to stay. It doesn't mean you're not serious. It just means you're being smart about it. It means you're being cautious in a very reasonable way. And then you have time to make layers of decisions. The first decision, do I want to live in this country? Okay, once you've said yes, all right, do I want to live in this region of this country? Maybe you got that right too. Okay, great. Do I want to be in this particular city of this region of this country? Oh, well, actually, I like the one next door. Every time I visit there, I seem to like that better or you know, here in Leon, you may be like, well, I really like, I really like Asian fusion food. And you're like, man, every time I go out for Asian fusion, I'm driving up to Chinandega. Leon's great, but it doesn't have this food. And I eat that at least once a week. And that's such a, maybe you want to live in Chinandega instead. Okay, fine. Then you adjust. Now you go look at Chinandega. Now, do you know the barrios of Chinandega? Do you know the different neighborhoods? Do you want to be downtown? Do you know what good pricing is there? It's going to take a little bit of time in Chinandega to get to know those things. Do you know which restaurants you really like? Are they viable? Are they going to be around for a long time? Do you want to live near that? Right? Probably just a restaurant is not a good reason to pick a city. It's just an example. And so you, you, may, you hone these decisions. And at some point, maybe after six months, but more likely after 18 months, very likely after two, two and a half years, you, you should have a really good picture if you're putting in some effort, if you're thinking critically about it as you do it. And you can say, wow, okay, yeah, I did pick the right country. I picked generally the right region, but I had to hone the exact location. I had to hone the neighborhood. And then I had to hone the street. And then I had to find the right house because there's not that many houses on the market. And every house is so unique. Finding one that is just perfect for you, very difficult unless you're building and then finding the right spot to build quite difficult. Yes, people are willing to sell in nearly all cases, but it's still difficult to hone that down and really find the right spot for you. And then after you do all that, then you're in a great position. At that point, you know what a house should cost, hopefully, or at least relatively close. You know what building costs are, so you can compare. You know what renovation costs are, so you can put that into your equations. You know what the different neighborhoods are, how they're going to affect things. Would you need a car if you live there versus where you are now? Have you decided you already have a car? Is it not something you're interested in? Uh, how, like All these aspects of life, you're going to have that information. You're going to pick the right place, almost certainly. You're going to get a good price on it, almost certainly that becomes a very, very good decision. And then when you make that giant life decision, you're not guaranteed, nearly guaranteed buyer's remorse. Instead, you're gonna be like, ah, oh, I put in so much work and I know it's right. And then you're gonna be able to enjoy that house because it's the right house for you in the right location for you, in the right country for you with the right features. And that's not something you're gonna get from some random person going, hey, move into my neighborhood, I've got a deal. And then you think it's the one deal. It's not the one deal. I don't care where you are in the world, it's not the one deal. Here in Nicaragua, it couldn't be farther from being the one deal. Everything's for sale, everything is cheap. No one should be telling you, oh, you gotta hurry, you're gonna get no, right? Now I know there are places where the, the real estate market is hot and you don't wanna wait five years, sure. 
There is no real estate in the world where you want to hop in and blindly buy without knowing what you're doing. There is no place that you want to do that. And that's one of the reasons why smart investors don't just go to other countries and invest. They may go to other countries and do tons of research and invest. They may have trusted partners that they work with that happen to be in a, you know, my business partners can come to me and be like, hey, I need a lot in Nicaragua, hook me up, right? Yeah, if you're my business partner, that's different. Like, I don't do real estate for people, but I would for my business partners, obviously, and have for my business partners. That is different, right? Yes, you can come to someone like me and I can go to my business partners in Bolivia. I can go to them in Mexico and be like, look, find me a deal. I want to get in on this country and I could have a trusted resource. But if you are going in and you're new to that place, no, you, that is not how good investment happens. That's incredibly reckless. And you need to know that your resources in that country are people who not only that you trust, which going into Bolivia, my resources are people that I trust, absolutely, but they also are real estate investors themselves who have built uh, properties of their construction experts. And the same thing here in Nicaragua, my early partners here were construction people. I had a lot of knowledge even when I came in and I still put in lots of years and had those resources and then feel I got really good deals and still could have done better for sure, but got really lucky and, and, and have, have learned lessons that I want to pass on. But that time, that knowledge is really important. But someone who wants to take advantage of you is going to try to sell you a house, get you, get you emotionally tied to a place, get you to feel that there's a sense of urgency, get you to be misled as to how much things cost. Every single, I guarantee, every one of you who's just joined the channel, who is now looking at Nicaragua, I cannot state this enough. Everything you're going to see online is so expensive compared to reality. It is all. I cannot overstate this. You will not find a real price ever online. And right now, because there's suddenly so many Canadians, especially, this is happening everywhere, but in the last week, so many Canadians looking at Nicaragua, the drive to put fake prices up and confuse you is out of control. I don't know for a fact that this is happening, but I know it is the logical thing that would happen, and it's what happens all the other times. Everyone is in a position of trying to sell you on, on doubling, tripling, even 10 times the prices on real estate, lots, houses, everything. They are trying to mislead you. So, so right now, you are already in this position. If you've looked at a house online, you've already stepped into the con game because legitimate houses are not going to put their prices on online. It doesn't make any sense to because there's more money in conning people, way more, orders of magnitude more. Selling a house should earn you five or $10,000 max in profits under normal house sales, sales here in Nicaragua. But people are hoping to get two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000 uh, profits on properties that are only selling for $600,000. Do you want to be paying 80% markup on a place, just be 80% of their profits, right? Just because you didn't do your research and you'll never be able to unload that house. People are going to tell you, oh, things are moving quickly. There's urgency. There is no urgency. Things are not moving quickly. And I realize so many Canadians are looking right now this week like it is. I can tell you, I am seeing the numbers. The number of people who are watching is just crazy. So the amount of sense of urgency is easy to portray, but it is fake. You have time. I do recommend that you get in motion, that you come down and investigate whether it's Nicaragua or it's Thailand or it's uh, Argentina or Paraguay, so many great places. The world is full of amazing options for you. And Nicaragua is just one of them. I happen to really like it. It is where I chose. So I'm, you know, speaking from a place of personal experience, I've lived in many countries and I chose to come back and permanently be based in Nicaragua for many reasons. So for many of you, I think it's going to be a great option. And as it's been said in the Canadian news, like it is suddenly a target spot for Canadians and it makes sense. But you are now already in a position where everybody who is looking to gain confidence of you and try to sell you on something is out to get you. You are now the new target right now, not sometime in the future, right this second. The moment you open a web page and say, I want to find out more about Nicaragua. And you should be looking at my channel with a very critical eye. What is Scott trying to sell you, right? Where is, where is my money coming from? Because you don't want to be in a position where someone is showing you a video like this, and then you find out that they're selling real estate and, and they're just trying to convince you that you got to come here because this is where they sell real estate. And oh, it's, it's a hot market. It's not. It is a very cool market, which is what makes it so good right now for you to come investigate. Because someday it will be a hot market, but not someday like in three months, someday in a couple years, maybe in 10 years, maybe in two years. Could be, 
don't wait three years to come down and investigate. Definitely don't do that. But don't invest. Don't put money in other than your flight, your luggage, a hotel, some nice restaurants. Don't put real money in. Put vacation money in. Just make that vacation indefinite until you know it's the right place for you or until you know it's not the right place for you, of course. So that's the first type of scam is the real estate. And we're going to go other videos about that. And I have tons for anyone who's watching this. All of this is covered in so many videos, but I know it's hard to find them. And right now we have so many new people who are specifically here for relocation. Often we have travel people. Often we have just people who are interested in Latin America, people who are interested in Nicaraguan culture. But right now we have a boom in people who are really serious about relocation. I'm getting flooded with emails. I'm doing my best to get back to everyone. We are getting flooded with comments, also trying to get back to everyone. And uh, so many people are watching the channel. Uh, we actually estimate that when the last video came out, we believe we doubled doubled the entire national YouTube online presence of Nicaragua, of content coming from Nicaragua for that time period. Doubled all of it, not doubled my channel, doubled everything. The numbers we're seeing from this past week are so unbelievable. So we know that you guys, specifically from Canada and definitely lots from other places, but so many from Canada are looking right now. So that means that everybody who runs scams is on high alert. They're looking for you. So this is a really important information. You need to be super cautious. The second group of scams are investment scams. These are a little bit easier to pick out. Not everyone is willing to invest in a business in a new country, but a lot of people are. And there's some magic that says when you're in your home country, you would never start a business. You'd never invest. You'd never pull out your nest egg and hand it over to a stranger and be like, make me money. But when you come to a new country, there is something that makes a very large segment of the population suddenly feel like doing insanely reckless things that they would never do in their home country. Things that are so much more reckless than doing the same thing in your home country. Just as an example, if you were to take out $100,000 of your personal savings in Canada, now if you're a, you know, you have $100 million, whatever, you don't care about that. But if you have only $1 million, you care a lot about that. So you take out $100,000 in Canada and say, I'm going to invest this in, you know, someone who's, who's going to run a business in Canada. That's about the safest way that you can invest in something private, of course, things like index funds are the absolute safest, but they have real caps on what they can potentially earn. If you're looking for something a little bit more adventurous, investing in a small business in Canada ranks among the world's safest ways to do private investment. Canada just has a really, really stable economy with really regular growth and an incredible success rate of local businesses. The U.S. and Canada are both really, really high in this category. Canada is actually a little bit safer for this. The U.S. is a little bit more likely to make more money. So there, it depends what you're looking for, but both rank among the world's top safest. So as a Canadian who's in Canada, you would never, we have thunder going on, you would never want to give up the advantages you have of being able to invest in the Canadian or potentially the American markets. That you could, you could blend between the two. Uh, very safely, you would never want to do, give that up because you have the right to do that, absolutely, with no overhead, with with utter safety, and, and you really know the people involved and all the laws are in your favor to protect you. You would never want to come to a place like Nicaragua, Thailand, China, Namibia, you name it. You don't want to go to a place where the market is tough, where you don't have that incredibly high success rate, where you don't have... The, the protections as a citizen, where you don't have the internal knowledge and the connections to be able to verify the people that are doing the investment for you. You definitely don't want to go to the extreme, difficult and risky when you have this, right? That makes no sense. Yet, emotionally, so many people come and do exactly that. They say, well, I could very, very safely invest $100,000 and probably retire from the income probably not quite retire, but do really well, have it be a really good additional income to my life. Instead, I'm going to give this $100,000 where the chances of failure or at least significant loss of that money is all but assured. It's basically a guarantee. I don't want to say don't invest in whatever country you're moving to. I'm an investor in Nicaragua. And I love being an investor in Nicaragua. And I'm passionate about being an investor in Nicaragua. But I took my time I was here for years. I invested slowly. I took my chances. I have a very realistic vision of why I'm investing. I want to help Nicaragua. I want to create jobs. I want to do good things. I want those, those investments that I have, which for me, a lot of 
newbies won't know uh, to the channel. Newbies to the channel won't know, but I, I invest in restaurants and hotels primarily here in Nicaragua, not because I think they're going to make money. That is not my reason. I do it because I want to have those particular properties. I want to have restaurants that provide certain food that I want, and, and sometimes they're just missing. And if I run those restaurants, I can guarantee I can eat what I want. And if they make money, that would be, wow, amazing. And if they don't, well, I'm helping my local village, right? I'm investing locally for me, making a real impact on my small community that I live in. So those things matter to me. And I know that that's what I'm buying with my investment, not that I'm taking a nest egg and turning it into an income source for myself. You could, you could be successful at that and make it an in income source, but the risks of that are super high. You need to be very, very cautious about giving up some of the biggest advantages that you have, because just because you're an expat does not mean that your American or Canadian investment opportunities somehow diminish. No, they stay exactly the same. You still have all that amazing power, just as your passport doesn't change. You still have that amazing North American passport that allows you to do all kinds of things that other people from all around the world wish they could do. Don't, don't burn those bridges by making bad decisions. Only invest where you're moving to once you know what you're doing, once it, okay, right? Hopefully that established that. But as soon as you arrive, or even worse, sometimes before you even arrive, you'll start talking to people like, oh, I wanna get some advisors, I wanna get some advice on stuff. Every, nearly everyone, well, definitely everyone who talks to you has an opportunity, and nearly everyone will leverage it to sell you a house or to get you to invest in a business. Really standard confidence scams. <laughs> There's some serious thunder here. Really standard confidence scams here are just, oh, you know, we had a conversation. I have this business opportunity that's come up. You just feel like the right investor. I don't want to tell other people about it. I'd really like to talk to you about maybe getting in with me. You, you, know, you know, this could be a way for you to get into Nicaragua. And they'll play on you wanting to put down roots. They'll play on a feeling that you might think you have to have a business in order to come here or that it gives you some advantage. I would give you some advantage, right? Having a successful business here is not a negative for sure, but you don't need it to come visit. You don't need it to stay indefinitely. You don't need it for residency. None of those things, but people will either tell you that they is needed or at least imply that it's needed. You also don't need any of those things to buy a house. You can buy a house without ever coming here. You don't have to be anything but a tourist and you don't have to even be an active tourist. You could be in Canada and say, I wanna buy a house now. Don't do that, that's terribly foolish but you absolutely can. You don't have to do all these things. So you see, okay, first real estate scams, second investment and business scams. These are the first things. As soon as you're off the boat, they're going to off the plane in most Canadians case. This is what they're going to be trying to sell to you. And the third thing, and they're going to try to get you on this long before you come down is lawyer scams. There are so many lawyers who advertise online or advertise in English and try to get the attention of expats or future expats before they come here. Because here's some things you need to know. In all these cases, it is 100% legal to completely scam you before you get to the country because you're in Canada. So there's no Nicaraguan law that says you can't run online scams against people in another country. They absolutely can. It's not in their jurisdiction. And it's not in Canada's jurisdiction. Whose jurisdiction is it when you are Canadian and you're in Canada and you go online and take a random lawyer? If it's even a lawyer, how do you know? and they claim to have an office, and they claim to represent you from afar, and they're gonna help you get immigration and all these things. Yeah, there's legitimate immigration lawyers here in Nicaragua. I work with a phenomenal one. I've met other great ones. They're out there, but they're not advertising online. They're not telling you when you're in Canada, hey, uh, you should talk to me and start working with immigration before you get here. Why would you do that before you get here? If you knew anything about Nicaragua, you would know that doesn't make any sense at all. On uh, One out of a 10,000 people it makes sense for, right? You are not that person. You come and you spend time here and then you make decisions about potential residency paperwork in the future. You can stay four years before that comes up in many cases. There's no reason to be having a discussion about that at all ahead of time. Now, of course, you're gonna have questions. Will I be able to get residency? Look, the answer is gonna be yes. That's just, I've never met someone where the answer is no. In theory, there could be a no, but it's an extreme situation. If you're like, well, I'm a wanted serial killer and I'm on the run from the government, but Interpol knows about me, can I get residency? No, no, you cannot get residency, obviously, but 
that's the kind of situation where people are like, well, will I be able to get residency? Yes, if you're not that person, chances are. So, but you need to come down and experience it. You don't even know if you want residency yet. You shouldn't be looking and shouldn't be engaging lawyers who are in a position where they need to get that money from you now. Because if they do it now, they can get 10, 20, $30,000 instead of hundreds of dollars or maybe a couple thousand if you were actually here. And they don't have to actually get you residency because you're not here, it doesn't make any sense. And you just show up, there's so many ways to scam you. And real estate companies, they don't have to necessarily even give you a real deed. You could end up without even having a house, not just paying too much. You could get totally scammed and end up, and I know people who had businesses that tried to get them to invest. The business wasn't real. There was no investment at all. It's not just that it was a bad investment. It was a fake investment. I myself have had people try to sell me deals where they, they was actually a fake real estate deal. These are really standard things. And I know tons of people who've been conned by lawyers or people lying about being lawyers. They weren't actually even lawyers. And they're not selling the services that they say. They're not doing legitimate work. And anyone who gets their residency from them could have it just revoked by the government because it's not real residency. It's people are forging papers, not doing the, the proper processes. And it's you, the client, who's going to be on the hook. You think that lawyer's going to, they're going to disappear. They know what they're doing. They know what risks they're taking. They know how to disappear or how to disavow the work that they did. Well, I didn't do it in Nicaragua. They were in Canada. That's not my problem, right? They try, right? There's all these ways that they're thinking through how to protect themselves. You need to think through the same things. And all you need to do to protect yourself is not engage any services like that. You want to engage a hotel to stay? Yeah, fine. You want to engage a restaurant to feed you? Great. You want to engage Watching YouTube videos, I highly recommend, and this is very self-serving, watching YouTube videos if they're not trying to sell you something, right? I'm trying to anti-sell you something. I'm trying to anti-sell you everything. Stop spending money. When you're first coming to a new country, don't pull out your pocketbook. Don't sign contracts. Don't make commitments. You are not in that position. It doesn't matter how much it feels emotionally like you want to be, you don't want to be. That is the worst possible time. It is pouring rain on me. I need to move. I don't have a lot of places to stand where I can do the show when it's raining this heavily. We have a nice solid rain. It is such a gorgeous day out there. I love it when it rains here in Nicaragua like this, especially this is the morning. So we don't normally get morning rains. It's very atypical. Uh, this is the rainy season, but normally we get the rains in the afternoon, more about three to five o'clock. So this is not something we normally get. And this cools down this is the best time of day because it really cools us down for the day and uh, blocks out the sun for a little while so that the country isn't heating up the same. So this, we went from a relatively warm morning to absolutely beautiful. I'm outside. We actually don't have power right now. They're working just outside the house. And uh, so we're without power for a little bit. So we have no air conditioning or anything like that. We're just sitting outside. It is beautiful and I'm getting some videos done. So really, I think we covered everything that you need to know. You, you have to watch out for these scams. You need to be thinking critically, but most importantly, you can protect yourself simply by not engaging in any of these kinds of services. You have no need for any services when you're first arriving. You can come do things on your own. And, and Nicaragua, we're going to do specifically for Nicaragua, but this is true everywhere, right? This is generic relocation advice. But Nicaragua especially, you can just come, stay basically indefinitely. We're going to do some videos that really go into this to help you guys who are new to the channel and new to looking at relocation and suddenly considering your options to understand just how easy it is, how, how you can do this today and, and how you don't have to t make any big commitments or do something that's actually scary. Wow. I'm just going to show you the water coming down right here. Look at that. Can you see it? Yeah. And, uh, and, and you could be experiencing relocation in a travel mode. And that's going to be a, an upcoming video in just a day or two looking at relocation as travel it's going to it's going to blow your mind it's going to make it so easy and so low stress and make it something actionable that you can do right now and and you don't have to change your life you're going to find out if you should change your life thanks for joining me like and subscribe and if you'd like to support the channel we don't have any sponsors i don't sell anything except for like t-shirts and stuff i'm like we really don't sell those either um but uh you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash scott allen miller that just helps support the work that we do here on the channel. We just love talking about relocation, living in Latin America, Nicaragua, where I live specifically. I enjoy doing this. I moved myself to many countries and settled here in Nicaragua and have uh, fallen in love with life in Latin America um, and really feel that a lot of people are missing out because they don't know what their options are. So we're trying to help them. Uh, share on social media. Tell someone about the show. I'll see all of you tomorrow. And I'll do my best. Pop up four videos on the screen. Your job now is to click on one of those. 
Or if those aren't interesting, go look through my back catalog. We got videos on every topic about relocation, travel, Nicaragua, Latin America, you name it. We've got them. Go check it out.